Welcome, welcome. Yay, we're on crew two tonight. Crew one is out, <laughs> crew two is up. And we are excited to be here a little late, a few technical little things going on, but I think we're gonna be good. We'll we just go a little bit later because you know what I did? We couldn't do it last week. We had just a last minute little interruption and we had to postpone. We appreciate y'all being here. And so we postponed it to this week, but you know what that did? That gave me more sewing time. <laughs> so we have way too much stuff. But I really, you know, it's better to have too much, right? And then y'all can choose what you like and what you don't like. And I, I always love your feedback. So by all means, let us know, let me know. And so we've got questions. And if you have questions as we go along, feel free to ask them. And if there's things you wanna see f photograph wise, we'll give that to our photographer back there. But we really appreciate our stand-ins tonight so that we could get this done. Okay, so we're going to talk about must-haves for fall, and there's so much fun. There's so many fun things out there that I think that's what why well, I couldn't stop because I just kept seeing more and keep sewing, even after I made my list, second list, and then the third list. So where to start? Oh my goodness. Um, we're going to start with photos, and if you're okay, starting with number one, Mr. Brett. This first one, you know, some of these you guys will send me, like this one, you all sent me this one. And so really what this is, is a, you know, a good asymmetric line and what's really popular for fall is fringe. Believe it or not, fringe is really, there's a lot of it out there and I love it. Although because of the, because I had so much, you guys, I couldn't dress my mannequins. There's not enough mannequins. There's not enough space for all the mannequins. So I had to layer clothes. It's not necessarily how I would wear them. But you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna skip to number three. Let's see what three is. Nope, four. Okay, so the trench coat. The, we're gonna start with the trench coat because the trench coat's on top and then I'll take it off and we'll work our way back to the beginning. The trench coat is so popular. It's just crazy popular. And I sat there and I thought, okay, I've got a trench. I've got, you know, I want something different and new. And I ran across this, um, this, cu this cutoff, this short, this crop trench. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna do a crop trench. And I had this fabric and I've got enough notes to where you guys, I'm gonna try to keep you on track with fabric and everything, 4606. I believe this is an Oscar de la Renta. It is absolutely stunning beautiful. And I mean, since the day it came in to the store, I just like thought, okay, what am I gonna do with that? I have to do something with it. And I, ha I wanna show both sides. So when I saw this crop trench, I thought, okay, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. And if you notice with this crop trench, one thing that's with it, and I think it's shown well, and it's a great way to wear it, is with a long full skirt. And so what I did is I made 28.50. Okay, so let me, Sorry, the trench coat is 1925. And I'll tell you what I did here in a minute. And then 2850 is a skirt I, went, I did to go with it. And that's Michelle's skirt. And Michelle's skirt is done out of, I did it out of 3900. It's a, it's a knit. It's the um, yoga pant stuff. It's a knit, it's, it's amazing, it's just perfect. And it's really a great combination. And then you could just wear it with literally a flat, a flat boot, you could do heels, you could really take it any which way you want to go. So let's go back to this short crop trench for a minute. What I love about the trench coat and what you're seeing for fall, a couple trends. Number one, you're seeing that they're not using all the pieces. Like in the red, if you notice, there's no back shield. There's no epaulets at the shoulder. It's merely a double breasted and it gives you impression. And if you notice, there's six buttons. And I want you to notice that because that's where you're gonna cut it off. So I went below the, the third set of buttons and I added a few inches below that because you wanna remember that you could always shorten it, but if it's too short, it'll look weird and you can't lengthen it. So you wanna make sure that you um, get it long enough. So go to the third button, mark on the pattern and give it an extra four inches, five inches from there cut all your pieces off. So you've only got three pieces. You've got your front, you've got your front facing, and you've got your back. A big trend for fall is no linings. So I decided, okay, I'm not gonna line it. And then we were at the store Saturday and we were talking about pros and cons of linings. And one of the negatives is it's hard to put your arms there. It's hard to get a jacket on if it's not lined. So what I did on this is I lined the sleeves. 
And that way, if I decided, and I went with a fun color, if I decided to roll them up, I would have a really fun color that came up in the lining. So it was just really meant to be a fun jacket. This fabric, if you look at one side, it's shiny. If you look at one side, it's not. And um, it, so I decided to play with both. And then I, if you look at the next picture of this trench coat, just go to that next one if you don't mind. Yeah, I love the piping on this. I love that piping and I love the contrast. So I went ahead and I did the leather piping. So I used the shine in the little parts and I used the matte in the big parts so that the majority of the trench coat is really matte. And then the shield, you can see um, the collar, the upper collar. I did the epaulets because I like them. I didn't do the sleeve belt I didn't do the belt so the fun thing was is you just kind of got to pick your pieces and just decide what you want to use and what you don't want to use and then you can decide how much time it's going to take you so like for my collar to make the collar um, to make the epaulets to do all the pieces oh the back shield the front shield because there's piping along here and then top stitching it took me like one hour to do to assemble those parts and then I assembled the rest of it. I just, and then I, I did the lined sleeves. I had so much fun making this. You know, for a little while now, I've said to myself, I don't really enjoy the journey of sewing. I only enjoy the finished product. So I've been a little bit more aware of the journey. I actually really enjoyed this journey, I have to admit. Every part that went together was just really fun to see all the pieces come in together. So it's got a French dart. When you shorten that trench coat, you're gonna see the French dart, French dart, I'm sorry, doesn't go to the side anymore, it goes to the bottom. And so that's okay, that's okay. I put my little hook and eye in. Um, it only took six buttons and then three buttons. The smaller buttons, one was here and I used the leather buttons to match and then two on the shoulders for the, is that just so cute, it's so adorable. Okay, so there we go, that's it. Let's answer questions so that we can any date on yet the fall patterns will ship. I'd like to muslin them prior to the October workshop. Well, it'll be before October, um, but we don't have, they're just at the oven. They're in the oven. We don't know when the timer will go off. So, you know, it could be tomorrow. We don't know. We don't know. Is fabric 3900 navy or black? It's definitely black. 3900 is black. Okay. All right, so that's our first one. Do a trench. It's trenches, trench is a must have. If you don't have one, make one. If you if you have one, make a new one. Make a crop. Make different lengths. They're just fun, but they, you know, they they are very very expensive. If you look at all the prices I went through, they are really really expensive. And it's if there's one way to save money, it's by making that trench as opposed to buying it because they are big money savers if you make them. And they're not they're just not that much time. So what I'm going to do is take this off because it's stuff underneath that I couldn't talk about because we have it on top of. I stuck it on top even though I wouldn't necessarily wear it on top just so that I could, you know, to get to what was underneath. Okay, so we'll put this to the side. Okay, now we can go back to picture number one. <laughs> the sleeve on Nancy's blouse has a lower cap. Hey, you guys, it, if it's not about what we're talking about, just email me. Okay, this isn't an all out ask any question you want time. It's kind of what we're talking about. Otherwise, we'll go for two hours. So if it's not pertaining to what I'm talking about, just email me and I will get you back. Okay? Okay. So this is um, what we were showing you. The first picture, if we go back to that asymmetric with the fringe, because that fringe is really popular. And so this is, this is 216. Love this pattern. It's Ronin asymmetrical top. And then what I did is I used fabric 45, 4475. This has, um, both sides are usable, has stretch in both directions. I wanted the stripe to be a little bit crooked. <laughs> it could be because it, there's no grain on stripes. And so I went ahead and just set it off a little bit. And that way what it led me to do was it allowed this portion to be pulled into fringe. So before you start the process, you wanna make sure that the direction that you're pulling can fringe so that you get this nice fringe once you're done. And then this is the back that actually wraps around to the front. 
then I just fringed it down to nothing in the back. And I put the back on the same angle that I put the front. And it's just a fun, you just want a great t-shirt. That's the only way I know how to say it. Everything is, the must-haves are a great trench, a great t-shirt, and then, you know, we'll go on. And you want something that you just love. And again, this is like two yards, and then I, I added the band. It just doesn't take much time at all. I, I mean, I got so much done in such a little amount of time. How many yards for the tra tra cro <laughs> cropped trench, trench cropped? The cropped trench. I used two yards of fabric, um, two yards of fabric. I used four yards of the black leather piping. And I used six of the larger buttons and three of the smaller buttons. Okay, just so you have it. Do we see the French darts on the trench? You do see the French darts, and they go into effect. Um, you see the darts on the trench, but it, because the trench, I mean, because you've shortened it, it has a tendency for the French dart, I mean, it goes to the bottom. It actually does not go to the side because on the trench coat, it's, you know, the French dart is lower on the side seam. So when you, when you shorten it and the darts come to the bottom, it's no big deal. Leave them at the bottom. Don't try to move them. Don't try to change angles. Don't do anything. But I love this little crop. It's just so cute. And crop is so popular right now. Midriffs, crops, all that kind of stuff. So just FYI. Okay. Um, so going back to the fringe and the great t-shirt, this is what I came up with. Because stripes are everywhere. Stripes are all over the place. And they're really fun. And they're... They're really out there. They're out there a lot. So use them and have fun with them. Okay, let's go to the next picture. Okay, this I just wanted to show you the fringe. Just where it is, how common it is, and it's all over the place. It's at the bottom of sleeves. It's not... You know, somebody said to me one time that they just thought fringe was very Western looking. It's so not. It's so contemporary looking. It's, it's, it really is too a little bit narrow to think that it's Western because it's used in so many different aspects. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. I think that might have been. Okay. So here there's a, a vest is really stylish. Sherpa, faux fur, fur, real fur. They're all really, really strong trends for fall. So what I did is I did a fur vest. And the fur is, um, I don't have a number, but you guys know we have the fur. And I would make it long. I would make it long. That long Sherpa or fur vest, and even with a hood. And I, you know what, I would recommend a pattern. I don't have it up here with me, but I'd recommend pattern 875. And the reason being is because when you've got fur, you want some shaping to it. And 875 being a princess seam, just cut it longer. It'll give you all that shaping and it's a kimono sleeve. So it'll just be really easy and really quick. And you don't have to finish the edges because the fur covers the bottom. So just don't forget the fur because fur is a really strong trend for fall. It'll make you look very current. Okay, what's next? This is pattern number 600 that I used. And there is a dart in here. So you can sew fur and darts, you can sew princess seams, you can sew all that stuff in fur. It actually looks really good. It looks better, because it looks shaped rather than just being kind of a big puff ball. Okay, then we'll go to the next one. We did that one. Okay, a great dress. So I switched this up a little bit. I want you to look at this. This is Acris, who is this? This is Saks Fifth Avenue, Acris, and what's the price on that? $3,000. $3,000, y'all can do a shirt dress. Okay, so I'm going to do it. I did it not as a dress. Instead of doing it as a dress, and obviously you guys know how to do it as a dress, I did it as a, a blouse that I would wear like with leggings. So I did it long enough that I would wear it with leggings. So the pattern I started with is pattern 600. A great shirt dress is what is a strong trend for fall. So what I love about this is how asymmetric it, it is. And this Acris, like I said, is 3,000. Um, I did it pretty close to exactly how the dress was. Um, scarves are a really strong trend for fall also. So let me tell you 
sorry, fabric numbers. I have already worn this. I, I'm in love with this shirt. It's just so cool. The shirt is the bus pattern 600. The fabric is 4670. It took me three yards, but I did a long sleeve. And you know, I mean, I, I these are rolled up, but I did a long sleeve. And because I'll show you why here in a minute. And then the scarf is 4629. As you can see, it's just a beautiful blend together. The colors are just gorgeous. And the nice thing about really having current fabrics is that they do blend well, even though they're different designers. On the scarf, I just did a rolled edge and I only used a half a yard and I went the whole width of this particular fabric. Again, 46.29. All right, so let's talk about this, this shirt, this um, really awesome shirt here. So you see that this is um, only one side is added. This side is completely normal. This side has a seam right at the waist. So what you're gonna do is on your pattern, you're gonna cut it off at the waist. Then we're gonna add this in and I'm going to show you how to make this piece. Very easy to do, not a problem at all. The only thing you're going to change is when you're cutting out your front facing, one is going to be four inches longer than the other side. That's it, four inches difference. But I added six inches to the whole entire blouse. So on me it's a little bit like a tunic length. It comes down, it's great with leggings, it's comfortable. This particular fabric is 100% cotton and so it just wears really well. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's look at the next picture, and I'm going to show you the, um, the pattern, the way to make the pattern. I've got the pattern pieces here. Okay, so the first picture shows you adding length to all those different pieces. And I know you all know how to do this, but you're adding the same amount of length except to the one side, and that will be the right side. And on the right, and I just followed the picture. You don't have to do it like the picture, but I followed the right side of the picture. And that side, I added the same length, but I added four extra inches. Okay, then what you're gonna do is once you cut that piece off, and you can see it's right here. You can see here's the bottom of the original shirt. So this is the side seam, this is center front. You can see how much I added. You're gonna three times it. Now it can be a little less than three times, but what makes the pattern, what makes it you know, longer here, is that you're gonna draw a straight line that goes from this point right here to this, uh, the side seam. So that when you fold it, it'll create the little, the little waterfall below. That's all it is, just a straight angle line. You make this piece three times bigger, or two and a half times bigger, it doesn't have to be exact, as long as you angle the line and once you fold it back, it'll create this great waterfall. And that's all it is. I mean, it's just so easy and the rest of it I assembled exactly as it was. But as far as like a great shirt dress, to me, I looked all over and they're all just the same. They're all shirt dresses, but when I found this one, absolutely fell in love with it. I think shirt dresses in general, they're a little bit plain, so that's where I wanted to just kind of add something to take it up a notch a little bit and so I kind of just made a scarf. Scarves are very popular for fall. They have been for years but especially this fall they're just really strong and they do all kinds of things with them. If you don't want to wear them there you could tie them around your waist. You could do all kinds of fun options with them. So I'm going to put that there and I think that will stay in okay, case so we have to ask questions and go back to it. Okay, any questions? Should we just pause for a minute and ask questions? How are we doing? Everybody okay? We're okay? Questions? No? I don't mind y'all asking questions, but I just don't want to ask questions that are completely unrelated to what we're talking about. Simply because um, it just takes me off to a tangent that I'm, you know, not ready for. Okay. Okay, so then, no, so let me just tell you that what I did, you guys, when we started this, is I get um, this great, you okay? Mute water. I get this great catalog from Raymond's every so often, I don't know, every few months I get this great catalog, and this was fall 2020. And so I followed their must-haves, and that was really kind of fun because their must-haves were, 
you know, just a great trend. It was generic, so we could really decide for yourself. I mean, obviously, they had pictures of what their great trench was, but I didn't think their great trench would be my great trench. I already had a great trench that was similar to theirs, so that's where it gave me an opportunity to kind of look around, and that's exactly what you want to do because I think that when we make a crop trench, we look a little more current and, than if we're making a long, or if we make a shirt dress that has that little curve to the bottom, we look a little more current than if we're just making a shirt dress. So I think it's really fun to just, you know, spruce it up just a little bit. Okay, so then the other thing when it came to vests, we did this vest here, we did the fur, and then the other one we did, I did was Bella's vest, and I know it's new, but the whole reason I brought Bella's vest in for the fall is because vests are so popular, cape slash vest slash wraps, whatever you want to call them. And so this is Bella's wrap. It is just really, I mean, I'm absolutely in love with this. The fabric, uh, the cut, the way it's done, the pockets, just everything about it. You can see that when you do it, it all lines up. This is just an amazing fabric for it. I don't know if you can see where I fringed it. And you can fringe it as much as you want. This fabric is... Um, Let me find it. Hang on just a second. Sorry. 4611. You only need a yard. 4611. And then you can make that. And you can, and then, you know, what's the other thing that's in, and I, I did this just with yoga pants for right now, is um, olive. Olive is a color that's just really incredible right now. And and it really lends itself to, to go with the olive, the whole coloration. And then I fringe the bottom too. And again, you've got some beautiful fringe here. It kind of falls apart when you're sewing it. You gotta kind of serge it quickly or finish it quickly. So this, the fringe was really fun to do because it happened really easily and quickly. Once you stop fringing, you don't have to keep fringing because it just stops. It's just really great. So 4611. I think is what this was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then the other thing for fall that they suggested was great cardigans. And cardigans, we love them. And so in both cases, what I did is I did great cardigans and I mixed them with stripes because the stripes are so popular. We see a lot of them and, you know, we want to take advantage of them. Here I put them at an angle. In this particular case, this is 220, and it's called Brunello Sweater, and this is um, Brunello Cuccinelli, and I just love his stuff. So it has like a back piece like this that goes to the side, and you can see at the side here where it curves around and then sews into the side vent. Just, a, a, just an amazing little pattern. I just love this pattern. But it's loose and it's comfortable and you can really do it out of knit, you can do it out of wovens, but it really takes advantage of the stripes. This is an acrylic and so it really feels like a sweater and it's yummy and it's warm. And then what I did is I mixed it with, um, this is the new Mock Turtle, the 101 that's coming in for fall. And it's just a great look, just with a simple little belt, loose cardigan, it just really looks nice. So I did that with a stripe very easy to pair the front and the reason I did horizontal is simply because um, it's a shawl collar and when you ever have, you have a shawl collar because of the curve you don't want to put a linear stripe because it, it, it just will it'll look funny and so whenever you're doing those curves you want to put them horizontal and so I did the same one with this one we've had this one as pattern of the month this is 915 love this fabric this is um, fabric, you guys, I'm so sorry, fabric is 4657. 4657, I used two yards. And again, isn't that cute how the horizontal plays in one to another? You can just see that with jeans for fall. A little white turtleneck, I mean a little white shirt underneath. And it can be a t-shirt for now and it can gravitate to a navy you know, mock turtle, or I made the purple, so you could see that later as it, as it gets colder, we could take this and layer it over this and keep the color. So whenever I'm sewing, I'm always gonna worry about the pieces kind of having a longer life. 
And so when you're talking about making these great pieces for fall, I think it's really helpful to think about how can they go together? How can they blend? How can they work with one another? And so when we turn this around, we just see it's just beautiful. Linear in the back, linear on the sides, visually up and down. And then because of the shawl collar, we don't want to put the curve going up and down because it will look funky. You want to put the stripes going across and that just looks makes it look perfect. So you can incorporate those great cardigans and stripes and get a really great look that's very soft and linear at the same time. And that was the goal. Okay, questions. Oh, can you show the back side of the um, can you show the back side of the hem looks? Yes, the back side of this hem was straight. So this is just once you lengthen the side seam on both sides, you lengthen them the same because when you make that long piece, it only goes longer in the front. It actually stays the same here. So that's what it looks like coming in. What was the pattern for the blue plaid vest that was French? That's 851, that's Bella's vest, that's a brand new pattern. So you can't, if you've ordered them, they're coming, they're, they're being printed right now. If you haven't, they'll be probably October 1 or before. I mean, honestly, you guys, they've promised us the patterns by the end of September. But sometimes they ship them like two weeks early. We just don't know. And you know, I, I just don't get anywhere if I say, okay, I call in and say, can you tell me where you're at? Or, you know, I've proofed everything, that's a good sign. I've approved everything, that's a good sign. That means they've plated them. It's just a matter of, you know, we're just waiting. So, as soon as they come, promise we'll ship them ASAP. But that Bella's vest, I mean, I'm excited to make them and I, I thought, okay, I shouldn't really include them in the webcast, but they're such a big part of this fall that I, I did. I did two of them. I did the mock, but the 101 is great and that Bella's vest is, is great also. Did you use three of the smaller buttons on the trench? Yes. I used one for the shield. I used two for the epaulets on the shoulders. So I used three total. For the purple top, do you cut the longer side on the bottom where you add the waterfall. Let me show you this paper again, you guys, and this will help you. And we'll leave it up for a little while so that we can reference it. And I purposely brought it up because this visual is really, really helpful. And our cameraman will kind of get in close. So maybe I should, maybe let me go over this with a black Sharpie. And then you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so here, is the bottom of the original pattern. This is the pattern I traced. I cut it off at the waist, at my waist, and here was the original pattern. So here I added six inches. Over here you can see I added eight inches. Then I added three times, well two times more, you know, whatever your width is of that pattern. You don't really have to add two times more because if you add two times more, it'll go all the way into the side seam. But let's say, you know, one and a half times more. And then this lowest point of the eight inches that you added, and this point right here of the six inches you added, just draw a straight angle line. And then when you fold these, and you fold the front behind, the, short, the longer side gets folded behind the shorter side, you can see automatically that this will happen. So this is by adding six inches, this over here is adding eight inches to the end of the pattern. There more than, there's more than that that you're adding, but it's to the end of the pattern, and then draw that angular line. Okay, does that help? But there's the original bottom of the pattern, and there's the waist where I cut it off. And then you sew them all into the waist, now, when I sewed this in, I actually left this out just a little bit more because I wanted to be able to put the front facing. If you notice on my front facing, this front facing goes all the way down on this piece. So you can see that I folded this portion right here. Oops, ah, I'm destroying my room. Sorry. You can see that this piece that goes behind, 
I brought it out just a little bit more so I could get that front facing on that piece and it would not capture this underneath. So if you look back at this, this is all free. And you want to use a really nice thin fabric. This is 100% cotton, so it'll lay really well. There's no bulk in there. It's just really easy. It's so much easier you know, than what it looked. That dress, that $2,000 or $3,000 dress, whatever it was, was just oh, so simply done. What happened with the dart on the right side of the blue shirt dress? You can do two, one of two things. You can actually sew it before you cut the blouse off and you can incorporate it then in the bottom. Or after it was done, I just took a tuck and I stitched it down. So there's a tuck in there and I just stitched it down and I left it. So you can do either one. But if you want the dart, stitch the dart first and then cut it off and close that dart up before. So when you add two, two and a half or one and a half times as much, you, the dart is built into that amount you're adding. Okay. What adjustments did you make to get the neck edge on the white beige top flat? What adjustments did you make? So this is just anytime you do a knit, um, you're going to make it about an inch shorter than the, it depends on the fabric, but in this particular fabric I've got stretch in both directions. So what that means is when I'm making a neckband, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a good amount of give in this neckband. So I can go ahead and make it like one inch shorter than the neck edge itself. So measure the neck edge, take an inch off, and then quarter the band, quarter the neck, Sew it together. That's it. There, there wasn't any trick of that. What proportion should a crop be for it to be flattering? At your, at your elbow. I mean, at your elbows. Your elbows go to your waist. Go to your elbows. And when your elbows bend. Okay. And everyone's elbows go to their waist. So if you bend your elbow and that's where the jacket ends, that's going to work really nicely. It could be a little longer. If it's shorter, it will look like you're in your little sister's jacket. So do be careful of that. It's better to be too long than to be too short. What was the name of the catalog again? Um, this is the Neiman Marcus. It's um, fall 2021. It's just the book that they send out, um, I don't know, maybe four times a year. And I just love the book. It's not that it's got anything that you can't see on, online. You can see it all online. But I have a tendency to, I love to just sit and look at it and not be online sometimes, you know, like the good old paper is still really nice sometimes. But so your, your must-haves are a, a great blouse, a great statement blouse. And so this is what I use for mine. A great sweatshirt, a great t-shirt, um, a great cardigan, a great trench, a great vest, a great cape. Those were the you know, the, the ideas that they gave. Okay. All right. This is way too much fun. So also now what I want to do is I want to introduce a little fun thing we're doing. And this is regarding PBS and it regards you because I really, it's going to be an interactive show sort of. So the first thing we want to do is let's go to, um, are we okay there? Let's go to the next photo if you don't mind. Okay, so this is a brand new pattern that we're just releasing today. <laughs> and it's the one I have on. Um, this was the one we did for the cover. We did a sleeveless, but the one I wanted you to see with the sleeves on. It is called um, Bonita Rose's Top, which means I think very pretty. Okay, and it is very pretty. Uh, so what we're doing with this is this is our celebrating our 10th anniversary. 10 years, you guys, PBS, 10 series we've got. Not really 10 years, 10 series. Um, but we're celebrating our 10 series. September is back to sew, is National, National Sewing Month? National Sewing Month. So we wanted to coordinate all those things together. And the pattern is here and the pattern is all done. S not done, sorry, but it's ready to be done. 
So what we're going to do with this is this is going to be a pre-order only. So we have, it's ready to, you can go to Silhouette Patterns. It is a fit to stitch pattern. It will take you to the fit to stitch site, which many of you know, it's not the same as Silhouette Patterns site. They're two different companies, two different altogether. But if you go to Silhouette Patterns, if you start there, um, it will, you can go to the patterns of 100s and you can look down in 301, it will be there. And once you click on that, it'll take you to the fit to stitch site. You can look at the front, you can look at the back, or you can go to the fit to stitch site. You can look on donate and the same page where those two patterns are, it's below that, it will be there also. So the top I have on is, is the top. We're only going to print the number of patterns that sell. This, this will not be part of stock. This is kind of a one-time only thing. It is a fundraiser, it's tax deductible, it's all of those good, fun things, okay? And so this is it, it's got overlays that are the front and the back. I put that white cotton up tonight because I wanted you to see the different fabrics that could be used for it. It does not have to be a knit. Like if you made it sleeveless, it could be a woven. It doesn't have to be a sheer. You could use two layers of a really thin fabric. Any of, there's so many options with this top that I just really, really thought it would be really fun. And you can see the overlay goes in the front to the back. This overlay that I have on, the fabric is uh, 4340, and I used three yards. So what I wanna say about this is I wanna kinda introduce series 11. Series 11 will start to um, film in March of 2022. The name of the series is going to be Your Questions, Our Answers, or something like that. The, the, re, the viewer asks. And so what we want, what I want, is I would like to really make the series about what information you feel like is necessary to have successful sewing, or what information you don't know that you'd like to really have a, a really in-depth answer on. And I want you in the subject to put FTS, fit to stitch, FTS 11. And that way, it, we've got them routed to a separate box to where they'll collect in that box and I can look at them. Please don't expect an answer, but we just want your input. We want to know, we're gonna make this series for you, about you, and what can really help all of us. I think it's gonna be so much fun, I'm so excited. We will have a drawing for someone who, someone who enters the, those that wants to come on set and be a part of the set with us. So we think it's really gonna be a lot of fun and we're very excited, but we obviously have to get started on it. Um, what I'm hopeful of is inviting guests who are experts in the areas you're talking about so that they can really give us concrete answers that we know to be factual and we can really expose truths. That's the goal. The goal is always great education and great information, okay? All right, so that's the top I have on, that's the top here. That pattern is a pre-sale for 10 days and then we'll take it off and get it ordered and get it shipped. It'll probably be shipped mid-October, okay? All right, questions. It does have a sleeve option, yes. We always have a sleeve option for you guys, you know that, because I, I like sleeves. I guess that's why, <laughs> because I like sleeves and I think that it's so easy to put a sleeve in there and then you have the option. It's really not hard to put a sleeve in a pattern. All right, what is, what was there another question? I missed it, I'm sorry. Is that good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we actually are a little early because I think I talked a mile a minute because I was so worried I had so much and I would be so late. So it's just like, -da 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 -da. so we can actually slow back and see if you all circle back and see if you all have any questions that you would like answered. <laughs> the pattern number is number, oh, the pattern, yeah, let's go over pattern numbers. That's a great idea. Okay, let's start with this. This is pattern 600. This is the classic blouse. All we did was lengthen it. We cut it off at the waist. We expanded the fullness. That's it. Isn't it cute, you guys? It's not my imagination. It's really cute, right? Okay, so that's pattern 600. Um, then we go to the cardigan. I brought these patterns up here so you would get a visual with all of these. The cardigan is 915. Hugo's favorite cardigan. We've had that as a pattern of the month, so a lot of you have that pattern. This is a great, I should tell you the fabrics, you know that? Let's talk of the fabrics at the same time. 
Okay, the 600, 4670, 100% cotton. The scarf is 4629. The cardigan, the fabric is 4657, I'm sorry, 4657. I use two yards, but just use whatever your um, pattern allows. You don't need more for putting the pieces different directions. You've only got four pieces on this, so it's very easy to do. This is pattern number 216, and the fabric is 44.75. We should vote for the one you like the best, because I, I'm telling you, I love this t-shirt. It's so cute. This is Bella's. This is 851. The pattern is not available right now, but the fabric is 46. 4611. The fur, I don't have the fabric number two. This is pattern 600, and you're going to make a long, beautiful fur vest. So cute. 875 was a pattern I recommended for it. This one, the pattern is 101. Um, the, the purple, it's not available just yet. This over it is pattern number 220, and is the cardigan. It's Brunello's sweater. And this fabric for 220 is 4690. And then we have the little crop trench. And the crop trench is 1925. And the fabric for this is 4606. And then we did the little skirt to go with because when you wear a crop, so cute in the wintertime or fall with a Longer skirt, pair of boots, everything's covered, but you look young and trendy. So $28.50 is the skirt, $3,900 is the fabric. Another fabric idea you could do is $45.28. I actually did a long skirt and I did a short skirt also. And either one, the fabric I used $45.28 also. So either of those two, you just want to really, and these skirts can really go year round. They don't really need to just be fall. They really work great in the summer. They really work any time. Can, can you turn around so we can see the back? Of course. Let me get rid of my pins, sorry. Yep. Yep, yep. But this one you can see just a little bit better. So I'm gonna turn it around too. And I can put my hand under it. There's an overlay here. And the overlay comes around and joins to the front. Okay, could we and see the inside of the fur vest, the seam finishes. I didn't do any seam finishes on this. The back is really nice. It's a knit. Or no, it's not a, it is a knit. It's got a little bit of stretch to it. Um, and I just left, I serged this. So my seam finishes were really all done because I used a serger. And you guys, we did a serve, a, a sir. <laughs> we did a fur sew along. So you can go back to that fur sew along and we made the fur um, at, you know, as you were watching, so you can see kind of how, how we did the sewing of it, what to be careful of and, you know, what we need to do. Okay? Does that help? It kind of slows things down a little bit. That felt good. It felt a little more organized than how I feel. Do you alter the circumference of the trench at the waist? I did not. It seems smaller. No, I don't know. I didn't. I did it just like the pattern was. I didn't change anything other than I just literally took away, I took away um, length is all I did. It seems smaller at the waist, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so, it doesn't feel smaller. Isn't it cute, I love it, just love it. <gasps> so see where my elbow is? That's where you want your, that's where you want your jacket to end. And I do think, you know, I've always said, like, when you have double-breasted jackets on, you need to wear them closed. But, boy, i got to tell you something. I put this on, and I love it open. <laughs> so I'm not so sure I agree with my statements, because I just really like it open. I'm not telling you it doesn't look better closed. It probably does. But I really liked it just open in the casual look. And I, I added a shield in the back, because I love the shield. A little bit of leather, and it just pops. So there you go. There you have it. Okay. Another question we have? The sleeve lining in the, the 
how did you secure the sleeve lining in the chop trench? So I cut the lining out exactly as the sleeve lining. I mean the sleeve, sorry. I cut them both out. In fact, I cut them at the same time, especially because I was only lining the sleeve. So I cut them the same time, and then I cut the lining two inches shorter than the sleeve. So the lining was two inches shorter. I made the sleeve, I made the sleeve lining, I sewed them together at the bottom, and then I pinned them together through the cap. And that automatically hemmed the sleeve. And then what I did do is, I think if he comes in really, really close, about two inches from the bottom, I top stitched. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, anyway, there's just a faint top stitch line there, like two inches from the bottom. It almost looks like just a wide cuff. And I did that just because I liked the way it looked. Okay. Okay, at the shoulder. Well, you don't have to secure it at the shoulder because when you sew it in, you're sewing the lining and the, 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 the jacket itself, the crop, this, the crop trench, I didn't line. Because the inside is so cool. The inside is like... You know it matches because this fabric is just so incredible so the inside is the right side of the fabric at this point or the wrong side you know I couldn't tell which one was which but so I didn't do anything so when I when I pinned that lining and the fabric together at the armhole it, ha it was hemming the bottom already and then I just sewed it into the armhole and that was it it was finished I surged it in place so it was all done okay so we'll put it back on our little girl here. So that's why she got the trench coat was because I didn't have enough mannequins to put the trench coat on anybody else. See, there you go. She's got the trench. Too cute, right? All right, so the goal is to sew. Congratulations, happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. It, it seems like it's been forever. <laughs> Seems like it's been longer than 10 years on some occasions, but yet 10 series. We've really done 10 series and KERA, who's our presenting station, I got an email last week. They said, okay, let's get ready for 11. And I'm like, ah, oh, we just finished 10. But um, we do need to get ready for 11. And so we really think, they think this will be really fun to make this about you guys, to make this um, questions. Just like I said, put in the subject line, FTS. 11 FTS 11 in the subject line because all those are going to get routed to a separate folder okay this will be really fun it'll be really fun reading through I'll keep reminding you I'll keep bugging you that we want to hear from you we want to hear your thoughts we want to know what you don't know we want to know what you need to know we want to know what what's nosy to know we want to know all that okay <laughs> All right, so we're going to say goodnight. We will, do we have any questions? Or can we wrap up? We're going to see you in two weeks. We're going to have the um, pattern number 1955 is the POM. Um, we'll have the POM in two weeks from tonight. It's still September, so we've still got time, even though we had to postpone last week. Two weeks from tonight, I think it's still September. I'm pretty sure it is. And so your goal is to start sewing have happy sewing that's the goal right guys to have happy sewing don't forget to order your top every dollar goes to fit to stitch i've yet to receive a salary from fit to stitch i'm hoping to get one someday but not anytime soon i don't care the goal is to educate anyway thanks for watching thanks for being here thanks for being patient with us last week as our teams heal and we'll see you in two weeks happy sewing bye